tennis player wins a match at Arthrash Stadium and hits a ball into the stands at a certain initial velocity and direction. And on its way back down, it's caught by a spectator 10 meters higher than where it started. We want to know how much time it takes the tennis ball to reach the spectator and what's the magnitude and direction of the ball's velocity at impact as it hits that spectator. We'll use projectile motion to solve for this. So first, how much time does it take to reach the spectator? We can take our initial velocity and split it up into X and Y components using trigonometry. We know the initial launch angle, so we can say our initial velocity in the Y direction is equal to our initial velocity times sine of that angle theta, which is 30 meters per second times sine of 45 degrees, or 21.2 meters per second. We can do the same thing for the X direction and use cosine. Since we have the angle with the X axis, cosine gives us the X directional initial velocity of 21.2 meters per second. You might notice since this is 45 degrees, it's equal between these two. It's the same amount of velocity in the X and the Y direction. And what we want to know is the time. We'll note that we don't actually know our final Y velocity here if we're trying to find the time. So we want to find the time. We might know some other things though, right? So we can say something about our position. We can say that we have an initial position of zero and we end up at a final position of 10 meters higher than where we started. So now, using our constant acceleration equations in the y direction, we might be able to write an equation that we can solve for the thing we want to know. Let's try it. Our final position is equal to our initial position plus v naught y t minus 1 half gt squared. It's a constant acceleration equation. We can substitute in the things we already know, 10 meters, 0, 21.2 meters per second for the initial y velocity, and gravity of 9.8 meters per second squared. Simplifying this, taking away some units just to make the math a little bit more clear, moving the 10 meters to the other side, we get something that looks very much like a quadratic. So we'll identify our a, b, and c, and plug it into a quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Plugging in our a, b, and c, we get some possible answers. We get on the high side, 3.79 seconds, or on the low side, 0.54 seconds. The question is, which one is actually the case here? And we can use some physical reasoning to try and figure this out. If you look at the path, it goes up, and then it says in the problem statement that it hits the spectator on the way back down. So if you think about what this expression means, this is telling us that our height is a function of time, and if what I've done is I've specified a height. I'm going to pass by that same height at two different points in time. One time on the way up, and then another time on the way down. So that time on the way up is not going to be the thing we care about. We care about how long does it take for it to reach that spectator on the way down. So this first time actually does mean something physically. It tells you the amount of time it takes the ball to first reach 10 meters high, and then it goes above there and comes back down. And this longer time is the time it takes for the ball to finally reach the person in the stands. So which one is it? It's the longer time, 3.79 seconds. On to part B. What are the magnitude and direction of the ball's velocity at impact? We can look at our x velocity. This is the easy one. It's a constant velocity. So we know the X velocity at impact. It's whatever it started with, 21.2 meters per second. Again, for all of this stuff, we're neglecting aerodynamic drag. How about the Y velocity? That's a little bit trickier. We have to use our constant acceleration relationships. But here, given that we know the time now, we've got a pretty straightforward one that we can use. And we can plug in the things we know on the right side to find my final Y velocity on the left. So we'll plug those in and get a final y velocity of negative 15.9 meters per second. We can then combine those and say the vector expression of our velocity is going to be 21.2 in the i hat minus 15.9 in the j hat with units of meters per second. But that's not what we want. We want the magnitude and direction. So this is a correct expression of the final velocity, but I want that as magnitude and direction. So we'll draw a little diagram here to get our mind around what's going on. 21.2 is going in the positive 
x direction. 15.9 is going downwards. And so our overall magnitude we can get from the Pythagorean formula, squaring those legs, adding them, and taking the square root to get an overall magnitude of 26.5 meters per second. And then to get the direction, it'll be below the horizontal, and we can do the inverse tangent of the y over the x. This will be the inverse tangent of 15.9 over 21.2 to get a value of 36.9 degrees below the horizontal. Expressed in one succinct statement, we can then say that my final velocity is 26.5 meters per second in magnitude at a direction below the horizontal of 36.9 degrees.